Good afternoon, sir. Hi, afternoon.
All right, evening guys, uh, we will start in a few. I'm just waiting for there to be a quorum of students before I begin. All right, so I'm seeing Altenet, Debbie Brooks Campbell, Roberto, Tatiana. All right, we soon start. All right, while we're waiting for the others to come, any updates relating to or related to your group project? Any updates? Yes, sir. We're in dialogue with Doggy Draco to have a meeting on Saturday. So okay. it's Good. All right. So what I suggest to do for that meeting, uh, just have... Um, a sense of like an action plan you know exactly what you're going to the meeting to talk about so you don't want to go there and then you're just everybody's kind of asking him a lot of questions but it doesn't seem as if it is properly organized so they kind of write a, a, like an agenda and you say okay we're going to meet with him we're going to first of all we might welcome or introduction so everybody introduces himself or herself and then, of course, we are going to ask him in terms of, you know, what does his name mean or what kind of music does he do? Where can we find his content? And so ensure it is properly organized, because I actually spoke to one of them today at length and he was concerned. I think his concern, if I remember correctly, what was his concern? Um, can't remember his concern, but he and I spoke at length today and he expressed some concerns and I had to reassure him about certain things. So. Just to ensure that when you, uh, oh yes, um, they had booked a time with him and then they did not turn up on time. They switched the time and, you know, he was a little bit off because he was saying that, you know, when you book time with someone, you are supposed to show up 
So um, he was a little bit concerned about that. So I, I recommend, and this is for all groups, that when you're meeting with the RTs, ensure you have somewhat of an agenda. You know exactly what you're going to talk about and you, are you not trying to talk over each other, right? So, you know, five of us are in the group and we're all trying to ask him a question and, and probably two or three persons are asking the RTs the same question in a different way. All right, so we'll try to just ensure that it's properly organized. You can actually do a, a kind of mock or a simulation before you actually go into the meeting and say, okay, this is how we're going to do it, guys. We're going to do introductions and then we're going to go around the room. And there should, there should be a group leader. There should be somebody who takes the lead in each respective group so that there is not much confusion, all right? I leave those things up to you guys. I'll just guide you. But um, in terms of group leaders and all of that, you have to take the lead in that regard, all right? All right, so thanks for that, Rona. Anybody else in terms of any new update relating to the RTs or the consultation with the RTs? Okay, so me and Rona is the same, the same mm -hmm. um, doggy, doggy Draco. So mm -hmm. between tomorrow and Saturday, we should be meeting with him. Okay, good, good, good. And if you have any trouble, just tell me. He's my, my, my nephew, so I can speak to him. Oh, no, I see the resemblance. He's actually not biological, but um, it's my. <laughs> it's it's. What you doing? Backing out, sir. When I said resemblance. <laughs> no, it's not biological. It's my um my sister adopted him somewhat, and um he just became a part of the family, and you know yeah. I had to make a well, make a decision. The resemblance mind. has grown. It has grown, right? Yes, it has grown over the years. <laughs> yes. So I had to make a decision in my head, you know, um, whether to. You know, I did go left or right. In other words, do you accept the person? If you're going to accept the person, you're going to accept the person fully. Precisely. You, you can't accept yes. somebody halfway. Half heartedly, yes. Right, exactly. So I decided yeah. to, uh, to accept him fully. So, yeah, um, man. So he is right. my neighbor and he listens to me. And um, I've given him. Okay, up. so um, if anything, I can we can reach out to you. Okay, sir. Perfect. Thank no, you. No, no, no. You're going to work. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you're going to work it out with him. Um, I've given yes. him some advice in terms of his own. Uh, there's actually a song that he referenced me, um, but I won't tell him. He doesn't call me Robin or Clark. You know, he, there's a different name that he uses. And okay. I've also pushed him to make um, a, a kind of Afrobeat kind of song because I was saying to him that part of my concern with his music is that it sounds too similar. Everything kind of sounds like the same song. Yes. Yes, you so, want to you want to change it up, mix it up a bit. Yes, yes. I, I told him to kind of mix it up a little bit so that you know you know you can fit. You know you have a Mother's Day, you have a Father's Day. Yeah. You, you have black. Yes, you want to reach. You want to reach everybody. You just don't want exactly. to reach one set of um one set of crowd. Yes, understand. Exactly, and I said to him, uh, as as even though Vibes Carter or Adija Palmer is in prison, if you watch his interviews, he said that when he came out, he had a strategy. The first strategy was to kind of um, show him a bad man. So he did a lot of quote unquote gun songs. <laughs> and once he won the male fans over, then he switched to women. So he yeah. started doing a lot of female songs and it was really a combination of Bounty Killer and Beanie Man. That's really, that was his formula, mixing Bounty and Beanie together. Because if you notice, Bounty is more, you know, tough, rugged, yes. angry, cross, miserable. Beanie Man is more for the girls. Yes, but man, the Cartel girls them sugar. Kind of, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what um, Cartel did, if you watch some of his interviews, he said he decided to merge the two to yes. kind of create his own thing. So, yeah, listen to his content. And this goes for everybody. Just listen to some of their content and see. Some of them are far more advanced than others. So Leo Carmichael already a professional singer the voice already a professional those those are two professional artists um so and they have a lot of they know music they can read music they can do a lot of stuff okay. all right so so some of them are more advanced than others okay. all right so do i have a quorum no i don't think i have a quorum yet anybody else in terms of any updates until we start the lecture and i'm going to start exactly at 6 30 because i have a lot of work to cover um, in terms of developing the campaign and then giving a class activity where you can actually start getting a feel of the campaign. Because next week, you know, I'm going to teach you how to do press release and how to write um, a feature story. And those are actually components of your press kit. So we don't have a lot of time to, to waste. So regardless of who is here at 6.30, at least 5.30 for you, 6.30 for me, I'm going to start the lecture. Um, any other, any, anybody else wants to just give me an update? You know, where are you in the process in terms of the RTs or anything like that? So everything is good. Any group, um, everything is okay with your groups. Sir, Romario was asking in the chat. Um, oh. 
if we are supposed to spend money on these artists? Well, that's a decision that you would have to make. Um, I think I had said it earlier that what I know one group did a year is that they seek um, sponsorship. So they created a kind of donation form and they kind of went out and asked for ask co workers and stuff. And that's how they kind of develop a little, you know, some amount of, of funding to, to get the work off the ground. Okay. So I leave that up to you. Thank you. Yes, no props. All right, so um, we have a few more minutes. Um, so let me get, let me, I'm actually hungry. So let me see if I can grab a bite. <laughs> I didn't realize I was so hungry because I was at work. Um, hopefully by six, uh, five thirty, we have far more persons in the in the room. But regardless whether we have a quorum or not, I am starting at five thirty because there's a lot of work to be done. Okay. So give me a sec. I'm going to turn off my camera and mute my mic um, until six thirty. But you can still, if you if you if anything is very pressing, you can put it in the chat. Okay, sir. Okay.
Good evening, sir. Hi, good evening. Uh, we are going to start in another few minutes, okay? Okay. All righty. Good evening.
good evening. Could you please mute your mics? Thank you. All right, uh, good evening, everybody. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening, sir. All right, so let's just this thing out for the last time. Um, uh, we did say group one is okay. Are you seeing my screen, guys? Yes, sir. Okay, so we did say group one is okay. Um, group two needed uh, another person. I'm trying to remember, um, Ruth, which group did I add you in the, la in the last class? I, I can't remember. Okay. Group one? I didn't hear that. Uh, are you there, Ruth? Sorry, you're not hearing me. I didn't hear. I asked which group did that. I didn't hear. Oh, so it would have been group. Okay. All right. So let's just put it right here. Uh, why is it not numbering uh, automatically? It should number automatically. Okay. What the? Can't you count? All right. Ruth. Her last name is Levy. 
Miami correct with Powell. Miami correct. Okay. All right. Is there anyone? Um, I think group two is okay. Group three, group four, group five. Why Sir. Yes. Sir, Sir, is five. no longer part of group five. Say that again. Carisha is no longer part of group five. Oh yes, I forgot. Hold on, let me. Why? So you can't share a part of group five. Or, yeah, does anyone said? Let me update this. Oh yes, we did say there's a girl who dropped the course, right? This which group is she in again? Carry some carry something something. Oh, Lewis, right? Is it group five? Yes, you said she's not a part of the group again, right? No, sir. It's Tajira Williams that's a part of the group. Oh, Tajira Williams. T A J E R A. All right, T A J E R A. Mm -hmm. Okay, Williams. Okay. Never answer somebody by saying mm -hmm. okay. Sorry, sir. Yes. All right. Um, thank you very much. So I think we have all sorted out our groups now. Um, as I said before, I'm not gonna spend too much time on it. Um, you know, always deliberating who's in the group and who's not in. I think Latona, your name is not spelled correctly. Is it La? No, isn't it L A, not L O Latona? Yes, that's correct. L it's yes. L A. Yes. All right. Thanks for that. I just updated that. All right. So today, now we're going to do um, campaign planning. I kind of started a discussion on on Tuesday. Yes, on Tuesday, and um, I was not able. I wasn't at my desk. I was very far away, and I didn't want to miss the class. So today, we're going to actually look at planning a campaign, a public relations campaign by going through the various elements that are there and also looking at example or examples and then doing a class activity where you're going to kind of create a little skeleton of a campaign which will give you a real feel of what you're doing especially when you reach meet with the up and coming artists so just as a reminder so the, so even though i don't have it here the ob the learning objectives today include well is really just to um, develop a public relations campaign by examining the various elements and understanding the various elements all right so just as a reminder the components and tools of public relations so when we talk about public we're talking about every and anyone that impacts the success and or failure of an organization of an institution or even of a brand or an artist because many of the artists especially the successful ones they are brands and they to some extent monetize their talent so i'm sure you know that alkaline for example he has outside of being a, a dance hall artist he has an i'm almost sure he's an entertainment company i actually taught his manager who's his sister um at ue for about three years um and i actually was given uh what they call it vip for new rules i think that's what they call it new rules um the first time it was held in jamaica i was actually there all right, so we want to understand the public um, and the context of, of um, public relations. We are talking about any and, any, any and everyone that affects um, the success and or failure of an organization, of an institution, of a brand, or even of an artist. Relations now means that you are establishing relationships. You are nurturing relationships. You are... Um, ensuring that the relationships are beneficial. Um, you're ensuring that the relationships are successful and that the relationships continue to be very positive. And you use and do several things to uh, maintain um, these relations between the brand, company, institution, or person and its publics. All right, so now we get the merging of public relations. And this is just a reminder before I get into the actual plan itself. Other things that are included in public relations are things that are included in public relations. I think we had spoken about propaganda and propaganda are really primarily a part of um, political campaigns. So President Trump, for example, um, well, let me not say only President Trump, but most politicians rely heavily on propaganda. And as this says, is the manipulation of symbols to transmit accepted attitudes and skills 
Um, it describes political application of publicity and advertising. So when, for example, um, Trump says Mexico is going to pay for the wall, um, we know part of that is, uh, is, is not true. You can think about it also too when they talked about Barack Obama being a Muslim, um, Joe Biden being not having mental capacity, and they actually had said that about um, Donald Trump as well, to be very fair. So, and then you have what is called campaigns. So these consist of concerted single purpose publicity program, usually on a, on a more or less elaborate scale, employing coordinated publicity through a variety of media, um, but focus on specific objectives. And we're going to go through that. A campaign objective may be the election of a, of a, of a candidate, the promotion of political cause or issue, the reaching of sales goal or the raising of a quota fund. So in your case, you are really promoting um, uh, up and coming artists by getting them onto the various, let us call them dance hall platforms or communication platforms so that their publics can connect with them. Another thing that is involved in public relations is lobbying. And there are various lobby groups in Jamaica, for example, Whenever the issue of, of gay marriage or LGBT discussions come up in Jamaica, you always have the church. You have, a, I think there's a particular name, I don't remember the name, that comes out and speaks out, at least male homosexuality, because when it's female homosexuality, nobody really says anything. But once it includes male homosexuality, then there, there are different lobby groups, such as the church that comes out and, and speaks against that. You also have lobby groups, some groups that they function as lobby groups as well outside of that. For example, Jamaica for Justice would, could be considered as a lobby group because they would lobby the government to ensure that certain human rights are protected. And they would ensure that um, when it comes on to co the constitution, if there's any amendment to the constitution, that those amendments do not infringe on the rights and freedoms of Jamaicans. Um, you also have other lobby groups in terms of, um, I can think about when it comes on to hmm, which other lobby group you can say, Jamaica for Justice, even Indicom probably could be seen as a, as, a, as a lobby group in the sense that they might object to some of what the police, um, the Jamaica Constabulary or the Jamaica Defense Force might want to do in terms of stemming crime. They might say to the government, no, this doesn't meet the muster. It tramples on Jamaica's um, constitutional rights, or they think that um, the police are not um, they are doing too much hard policing, so they might say to the government that they need to, um, you know, fix, um, change their approach. We also have um, another lobby, lobby group um, in Jamaica. We have, um, I think it's called J Flag. There's a you have J Flag, and they speak on behalf of or lobby the government on behalf of um, the um, what they call is um it it would be seen as a minority group, and I don't know if you know this actually that they actually work with the, the Ministry of Health um, to prevent the spread of HIV and so forth, because many people who say that they're straight, they're actually mixing with, with all kids. So they're mixing it up. And as a result, sometimes there's high risk and the transmission of, of, of HIV, um, HIV um, especially among, um, they call them MS, men who have sex with men. And also to the Ministry of Health also works with the red light district. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that term, red light district. We're talking about prostitutes and we're talking, oh, well, we have male and female prostitutes now in Jamaica. It's uh, Jamaica is kind of changing, but especially for female prostitutes are, um, and even go-go dancers. Um, when I was much younger, I was into go-go dancing um, in terms of loving to go to the, like, the clubs and just watching them dance. And I remember this was years, 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 years ago in my younger years when I was into that kind of stuff. And I remember one night I went to a, a particular go-go club and I saw a student of mine I was a part of a program um, that was that targeted um, at risk youth in inner city communities. And he was in um, Waterhouse and I saw him at the Go Go Club and he was like, sir, what are you doing here? I'm like, I'm a grown ass man, I can be here. And he was like, sir, I'm a grown ass man too and that's why I'm here. And then he explained to me that he was actually working. He was actually working with the, the Ministry of Health and what the Ministry of Health was doing that is that they were going to the particular, these um, Go Go Clubs in the red light districts especially, and handing out condoms to prevent the spread of HIV because at the time there was an optic in the spread of HIV. All right, so we do have a lot of lobby groups in, um, in Jamaica. And what this is saying is that um, public relations officers themselves to do lobby. So it says it entails the exertion of influence, smooth and measured pressure on other exercise of persuasion 
in essence, it means a group putting its point of view forward in an attempt to win other groups support. So um, you might do that in the sense of, for example, if you're working for an artist and you might lobby the government to, for example, op to, to say that we need uh, a permit to keep our dance because, or a particular event, because this is the way how um, my, the entertainer that I work for makes his money, you know, different things. You might lobby the government in terms of looking at it in, in, the, in the context of visa, the, the re visa restrictions, you might say to the government, you need to lobby the US government and, and to say to them that, you know, this notion that they're restricting certain entertainers from traveling um, from to other Caribbean countries, for example, or even the US, they might lobby the government. Um, and sometimes, sometimes a public relations officer is actually an attorney because they understand the, the, the ambits of the law. All right, so you do have that component of public relations. Um, but the focus we're going to, what we're going to focus on today primarily is campaigns, but I just wanted to bring in the other things because at some point in time, I'm going to also teach you about propaganda, not in very great detail because it has its own, it's, it's a course unto itself. Um, the, so some possibilities that would call for public relations, so promotional um, opportunity to inform the new service policy, which call for public relations to make wider publicity. So this is where, for example, a press release um, comes into play or a featured article comes into play and I've, show, I've shared some of that in the WhatsApp group. So let's just say that your artist has a new album. Um, the artist is going to go on a, on a, on a, on a world tour or is, is going to tour in Europe. You know, you put something out in the public domain, you probably get um, the artist onto Zip FM to do some amount of interviews or something like that, all right? So that's, that's one way of how public relations can assist. It could be competitive to overcome the resistance. Um, in this instance, in terms of competition, you can think about phone companies um, or telecommunication companies where they're constantly trying to, they're constantly in competition. Think about um, Flow and Digicel and who can offer the best um, package or deal for Jamaicans. And they're constantly putting out information in the public domain to, 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 um, to sway their, um, their customers or potential customers. Uh, another way of how it works in controversy to eliminate the contradictory conditions in between the organization and the public. So there are times when people are just not having a very good day um, with a particular brand. It could be that I, I'm sure you remember some time when NCB, people could not get their salaries because NCB's system was down. And it, there was this big discussion in Jamaica about, you know, governments are the government actually you know, sending people salary to NCB and NCB not being able to, to reliably allow people to access their funds, things like that. Adverse publicity to inform the truth or correct issues and thereby removing the misunderstanding. So it could be, for example, that the entertainer um, is accused of um, committing a crime when they might say, okay, uh, or the police might issue, might make, put out a statement that says, I obtain or a particular artist is a person of interest um, and then the and then the attorney for the artist puts out the statement and say, no he's not a person of interest and and things like that and now the police are actually very careful in terms of how they make these kinds of announcements about person of interest and who is wanted and all of that because it has serious implications for people's professional lives there are times when they put out the wrong picture the wrong image the wrong name things like that all right and crisis when um, whenever threat arises and we will talk about crisis communication. It is actually on the syllabus. I'm going to teach it later, uh, later on. What I want to focus is, uh, what I'm teaching you now are all the skills that you need to actually um, function to do the assignment, as well as if you, were, if you were to be employed as a public relations officer. So some of what is on the syllabus, I'm not going to teach like the history of PR. I don't give a rat's behind about the history of PR. You're not, you know, that, that is something that we don't necessarily have to cover. You don't, you're not studying to become historians. Um, components of public relations, um, and this again goes into you now, we're going to get into the specificity you now of when you're actually planning a campaign. What are the different components that are involved? So why is a campaign necessary? Why is a campaign necessary? And there are several campaigns. I'm sure you have seen, for example, JPS has had several public relations campaign in terms of saving energy. And they usually do these campaigns around high season, like Christmas, when you know a lot of people are going to be using a lot of current, um, a, a lot of electricity. 
well, Christmas. Um, I can think about Easter, probably Mother's Day. You know, all of these high seasons, they usually put out, they usually run a campaign, a public relations campaign, you know, giving people tips about how they can conserve. All right, can anybody think about any other, think of any other example of campaigns um, in Jamaica, like, you know, that is national. Can you think of any other um, public relations campaign? Um, sir, like uh, when, like during the hurricane season now, you know, they would give us hurricane tips and so on. Yes, right. Details, you know. mm -hmm. Yes. So that's another perfect example of um, a public relations campaign, you know, um, hurricane tips. Another one I can think about is the banks, especially when it comes on to election, um, it, it comes on to fraud and they'll warn you that they will do a lot of campaigning to say, OK, you know, don't give anybody your, your, your password or don't give anybody your this, your that. Or when you're doing banking, ensure that you're not doing it in public or on a public laptop or something like that those are examples of public relations campaign all right so the but it's just that the campaign that you're planning now is a little bit different the same in terms of the outline is the same but the actual product that you're dealing with um is is an individual is a um, who's up and coming so why is a campaign necessary deliberate message in other words your message or messages that you want to put out in the in the, in, in the public domain the more suitable media um, designated audience, you have to identify a designated audience, you have to know when to do the campaign when it talks about appropriate time, and you have to know what is it that you're trying to achieve over time, and how you're going to actually achieve that, all right, what are you going to use in terms of metrics or um, key performance indicators. Any questions, because I know I've been talking, 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 I'm not sure if, if you have any questions or anything is unclear. Any questions, everybody's okay. I should take that as a yes. Nobody has any questions. All right. So a well-formulated campaign at minimum prevents contradictory, confusing messaging to different groups across all media platforms. So everyone speaks with one voice. And this is why you do a campaign. So you ensure that all the communication platforms that you're going to use are actually, um, the message is the same. And this is why you actually plan the campaign, because you want to ensure that um, this um, that what you're seeing on, for example, Facebook is the same as you're seeing on Instagram, it's the same that you're seeing on Twitter, it's the same that you're seeing on LinkedIn, it's the same that you're see seeing on TikTok, all right? So you actually have to plan it. Another thing too, that you want to, um, why, why campaigning is important, and uh, as it says, to prevent confusion and speaking in one voice, is that each particular brand or person has what is called um, a brand voice. In other words, what is the brand known for in the marketplace? If it is, if 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 the brand is very, um, let us say, very agile or known to be very informative, you want to ensure that across the various platforms, communication platforms or the PR platforms that you're using, that that there is consistency in terms of the brand voice. All right. Um, coherence means that everything actually makes sense when it, all, when it is all put together. And if you have any questions while I'm talking, you can talk to me, all right? You can ask your questions. So a communication plan must be structured and we're going to look at the actual table of content and a communication plan recon reconciles the communication activity between the organization's mission, goals, objective, targets, etc. It means too that within an organization, within an organization, as a public relations officer, we did discuss it as a management function. You must know the strategic plan of the organization. What exactly are the strategic objectives of the organization and which specific strategic objective or objectives fall within your portfolio? So when I was the head of marketing at Excelsior, I knew that strategic objective, no, I think it was number six, were part of, were, were strategic, was part of my, um, was my responsibility. And that is what, when I go to senior executive meetings, I had to answer about that. I had to say to them, these are the things that marketing is doing in relation to achieve that specific strategic objectives. Strategic, strategic objective, all right? So that is very, very important that you understand the organization in which you work or you understand the brand or you understand the artists that is very critical for you guys. You must understand the artists. 
Um, and as I said to you before, do not go to the artist and it seems as if you don't know what you're doing. You're asking the artist a holy for question and, and he's unable to see the necessity or the reason for the questions. What you should do is to have your own meeting before you go to the artist so you kind of know, listen to his, the content of his music and say, okay, I see that most of your music is about this or these themes. You know, you sing a lot about girls and sex and all of that. Um, do you think that's the only thing you should be putting out um, to, the, to, to, to your fans? Um, you probably, some of you probably should go through and look at some of the comments of the fans of these artists to say, what exactly are the fans saying about these songs? Um, is it that the artists, for example, need to kind of do, um, kind of change it up a little bit because of what is happening in Jamaica? Or do they need to change their name? Do they need to change the platforms that they're, 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 they're using? So you, you kind of, you're a strategist. Um, so you have to kind of um, plan before you actually meet with them because you can't expect to meet with them every single time. You have to meet with them and get as much out of that meeting, then you go and execute. All right, so just bear those things in mind. Um, let me just see what is at the top because oh, it's getting so. So goal setting and defining the objectives. This helps to make the plan more effective. And we're going to talk about, I think we started talking about some of the goals and so forth. So goal is the kind of overarching thing that you want to achieve and the objectives are more specific or the objectives are, are very measurable are very or are very smart. So setting goals and objectives. So people know what is expected of them, all right? So if you are developing a public relations plan and you go to the artist, the artist might ask you why. Why are you doing this? What is it that you're trying to achieve? What will I get out of it? You should know why, all right? So you, you actually have to um, understand what is it that you're trying to achieve. Others know what is planned, quantify the resources that are needed and when they are needed. Um, so this is where budget comes into play. Improve communication between the participants, creates measurable results. And that's very, very important, as I said before. And this is where we're talking about KPIs, all right? Key performance indicators or even smart objectives. Um, so don't say, you, I think I mentioned it in the class before, you know, you just want to raise awareness. And I might say, how do you measure raising awareness? What are you going to use as a metric to measure awareness? So just bear those things in mind. Types of goals in public relations, reputation management goals. Those look at identity and perception of the organization. Example, we aim to improve customer service significantly over the next um, year. And I would significantly is not really measurable, but goals are usually not quantified. So goals are never quantified. It is the objectives that are quantified because the goals are very broad, but the, the objectives are very specific. All right. So we aim to improve customer experience significantly over the next year. Other types of goals, relationship management goals, the, these focus on how the organization connects with its stakeholders. Example, we aim to improve communication with our customers during the coming year. Um, task management goals, these are concerned in achieving tasks. Example, our goal is to increase the number of customers on the grid. So you need to, while I'm doing this, to think about what type of goal or goals I'm trying to accomplish for this particular artist. And usually you only have a goal and then you have different objectives. You don't have goals, 10 different goals. You don't do that. You have one goal and then you have objectives, usually four to five. All right, so goals are dreams we convert um, to plans and take action to fulfill, all right? So goals are usually broad and general, as I said before. For example, look at the goal for the coronavirus COVID campaign. Um, they are usually more specific. At, so, oh yes, hold on, hold on, hold on. So now we skip to objectives. And remember I spoke about objectives being now more specific and measurable. So they're usually more specific and measurable. The achievement of the objectives will ultimately result in the overall achievement of the goal. Notice it says the goal, in other words, one goal, which is specific, being measured or being determined by the objectives, the specific and measurable objectives. Are we understanding? Have I lost anybody? 
No, sir, following. Okay. Right, so we spoke about the fact that SMART objectives um, and SMART, you know, it's really an acronym for, um, why is this thing come up? Specific, in other words, the, the objectives may, must be very, very specific, measurable, achievable, or action-oriented, realistic, and timely. Usually we say time-bound. In other words, it must be being, the, the campaign has to be done um, within a specific period of time. Um, sometimes we say relevant, not necessarily realistic, but in the case of, of public relations, realistic meaning that it is something that can actually happen. Um, examples, uh, objectives for the coronavirus campaign, class discussion to in class discussion to determine objectives to increase awareness of da, 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 da and its impacts by 7%, 70%. All right. Um, so this is, it's, it's not finished. Uh, I think they want you to kind of fill in the blanks, but we're going to look at some examples in terms of the objectives. All right. Um, could you, anybody would want to finish this to increase awareness of what would we want to increase awareness of? And the end part is, and its impacts by 70%. What could be missing these? It should really, should be three dots, not five. It should be three dots. Anybody wants to hazard a, hazard a guess? To increase awareness of? Oh Lord, everybody is silent. In relation to the coronavirus, what could we want to increase awareness of? I guess it's a three letter word. I never said it's a three letter word. Oh, okay, it's a three dots. <laughs> These dots, you're supposed to, one, two, three, they're called ellipses. It means that it's an incomplete sentence. I don't know why they have five. They shouldn't have five, it's supposed to be three. When it comes at the end of a sentence, it is four. And the fourth one means that the sentence has ended. When it comes in, be in between words in a sentence, it means that some of the words have been um, deliberately uh, removed. So what could we want to increase the awareness of in relation to the coronavirus? Sir, maybe to increase um, awareness of the spread of All coronavirus. Right. Yes, we could want to increase the awareness of the spread of the coronavirus and its impacts by 7%. All right. Um, the public snow. And again, we talked about the, the target group. Um, in marketing, we use the word segments. Like the different, in marketing, they call them segments, which are the different segments you're going after. All right. So in public relations, they use the word publics. So the various people you are trying to reach with your messages. Segment the audience into specific profile groups for targeted messages. What that means is, and I probably should have, I didn't want to get too into the weeds. What that really means is, let me just show you what I mean. Uh, or do we know what we mean by segmentation? Okay, let me, oops, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, but let's still look at an example. Segmentation. No, not of Canadian terror. And usually I just run the image and we go here, not there. So here's a perfect example. So they're saying, so segmentation, just think about the word publics and you segment them ac according. It could be based on geography in terms of whether, let, if it is a, a multinational company, so they do it by country, or if you're in a specific country, it could be done by province, or if you're in a specific city, it could be done by um, error code. Demographics, you're looking at age and gender and so forth. Psychographics, you're looking at lifestyle and behavioral. You're kind of looking at what people do um, you know, over a period of time, like the number of purchases they, they, they do uh, and stuff like that. So in other words, when you are creating the um, public relations plan and you have a particular artist, you need to be able to identify who forms core of the artist's publics? Because even though you, you don't, you can't say everybody must be a fan. That that would be ideal, but you have to go after the fans that will actually make a difference in the life of the artist. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Right. You don't want to go after every and anybody. Why is it looking like this? Okay. Where was I? 
So you, you need to know who's your RTs, um, who's your, who, who forms a part of the public of the publics of the RTs. You can't go after every single person, right? And even in, even out, many companies will tell you that too, that they don't, they, they don't go after every single RIT, um, every single uh, member of the public. Some companies do, um, they, it's called undifferentiated mar, um, segmentation where they go after all people like a McDonald's, a McDonald's, for example, or a, or a KFC, they usually go after everybody because, of course, it's food and, you know, food is something that um, in, in, in relation to, to, to like fast food, you know, that's something that almost all groups of people enjoy and will buy because people are busy. We're not students, some people are working, things like that. All right, so, uh, okay, I think this is where we were. Right, so we were talking about segmentation and the different types of segmentation in terms of demographic, psychographic, and behavioral. Um, Publix for coronavirus campaign. Um, who, would you, who would you say forms a part of the public for the coronavirus campaign? Who would form a part of the public? Repeat that, sir. Who would be members of the public for a coronavirus campaign? Let's just say that you have de you're developing a, a public relations campaign um, in relation to coronavirus, who would be a part of the segments or the groups of people you would, would Ministry would, of Health? Go? Ministry of Health? No, why would you go after the ministry? It, it, would, it would be the Ministry of Health that is planning the campaign. Elderly or... So you, could, you might be going after the elderly. Students, so might, sir. Right. So you, might, so you might have different public relations campaign because you don't want to put all of them in the same campaign, right? So you plan a PR campaign for the elderly. Because, of course, the elderly know more than likely to reach them, you would have to what? Use the communication platform of the radio. Because a lot of them listen to the radio. Especially in rural Jamaica. So they listen to the radio a whole lot. And then, of course, you probably do you use traditional um, television during, for example, primetime news. Because older people will watch, prime will watch the news. Because they want to hear what is happening in the country. Right? Let us say that you, I think somebody said children. Yes, sir, I said students. Students, um, but students is broad though, because you guys are students, but you're adults. So when you say students, who are you talking about? How old are the students? Sir, we can target the younger ones uh, because you know you have the students. What do you mean by younger ones? Anybody who's younger than you is a younger one. Can target high schoolers and college students. All right, so so I would never lump high school students with college students. They are not the same groups. They are not the same group, right? I would never lump high school students with college students. Different demographic. <clears throat> Even in high school, sometimes they probably want to split them lower school, upper school. All right, so if, for example, you want to reach millennials, you might want to use go onto Facebook because a lot of millennials are on Facebook. But probably if you want to reach high school students, you'd probably use TikTok. And these are just, you know, I'm just, um, these are just examples because those are the particular platforms that they use. I know too, and remember I did say to you that um, public relations is a data-driven, has become a data-driven profession. So even in marketing, when you're going to plan a marketing campaign, you have to ensure that you know the segment in the marketplace that you're going after. And you have to know where are they, quote unquote, gathering? Where do you find them? So in Canada, for example, YouTube has become the number one search engine. Is it Canada? Yeah, I'm, I'm almost sure it's Canada. YouTube has become the number one search engine. So YouTube, Facebook, Google, uh, Messenger, that's where um, most people are. So if you're planning a campaign, you're going to use those particular uh, platforms. So defining the target audience, you have primary target, secondary, um, secondary. So primary target are the persons who the who have a direct impact on the success and or failure of your business, right? The secondary could be you know, persons who have a somewhat of an indirect. So let us say that you are developing a public relations campaign for uh, uh, an animation movie that children love, right? The primary target are children. But you can't target children because in some countries it's actually illegal to target children, especially if they're underage. So who do you target? You target their parents. 
Do we understand that? Yes, sir. Yeah, you target their parents because at the end of the day, children don't have money. They don't work. Well, we're talking about in, in the countries that don't allow children to work. So you target their parents um, and the parents will go, the, the children will go and bother their parents and the parents will then make a decision whether or not they want to spend. All right. So the overall, the overall, so when we're talking about strategies now, this is the overall approach that is taken to effectively achieve the objectives of the campaign. Um, do I, let me see if I can show you something that I actually developed for, oh no, it's on the other thing. Do I have it in this? I don't think so. I actually developed it. Am I still sharing screen? No. I have to make sure I'm not still sharing screen because some of my colleagues, they have shared screen and shown all kind of crazy stuff. So I am very, let me see if I, did I share it here? Um, it would be, just want to show you just a brief, um, would it be here? Just want to show you something that I had developed for, okay. And it somewhat speaks to the discussion we're having. Okay, let me try something else. Just want to show you an example. Okay. And it was never part of my lecture. That's why I, I didn't have it open, but I feel that we can um, look at it. Would it be in this? Okay. Promotions. No. Partnership promotional strategy. Yeah, I think this is. Yeah, I kind of find something. Download. This is a draft actually, but. Okay, so. Show screen. This is something that I developed for the place I work, the university I work at. All right, so. This is an example. You have the channels, you have the objectives, you have the tactics, the success message, and you have the budget. And I kind of developed it for, this, for, the, for the university. For my desk, telling them exactly the channel that I'm going to use is content marketing. And I think I changed the word from channel to something else. It wasn't channel that I use. Can't remember. It's actually a channel, yeah. So content marketing, digital advertising, and this is traditional and print advertising, email marketing. And these are part of kind of form part of the strategy that you're using it kind of forms part of the strategy and then we're going to also look at what is what are called ob tactics like what specifically are you going to do to achieve that all right so let me go back to the lecture so strategy or the strategy is the overall approach that is taken to effectively achieve the objectives of the campaign um, tactics the specific activities that are used to convey the message so I go back now to this. So the, con the channel I'm going to use is content marketing. And the examples I've given here are blogs, stories, and videos. These, this is the objective. In other words, what will, content, what will I use content marketing for to increase BCA program interest? The tactic now is actually what am I going to actually do to achieve this specific objective? Post video content to website and social media. Share articles and stories about enroll partner school students in the Bachelors of Creative Arts program, um, share co-branded or develop co-branded brochures, um, co-branded promotion on social media, co-branded web banners. So those are the actual things in terms of tactics. Pull up, use pull up banners, use tokens and swags, mount TV monitors showcasing BCA highlights. So tactics, are what specifically are you going to do? That's what we mean by tactics. All right, clear, any questions? No, sir. All right. So now we talk about implementation schedule, the time frames within which each tactic is implemented. In other words, some people actually within their peer plan, they, they kind of have a, it's called a Gantt chart. Let me see if I can find an example and show you. So let me come out of my work email, come out of my 
call a gun chart G N A T. Let your is it gun or not? How do you pronounce it again? Actually, I'm not sure it's gun chart. Let's let's use Google pronounce and see if I'm correct. Gun chart. Gun chart, yes. All right, let's look at some examples. Okay. Let me share screen. Uh, all of these should have been in my lecture, but I never intended on teaching these things today. All right, that's not what I want. Um, this could be an example. No, I don't like that. But what it really does is tell you what you're doing, um, um, what you're going to do like um, each week or even each day. Oh, I have a better example. Let me give you a better example. Uh, let me go into my social media. Uh, where do I find UFT? Let me give a better example. Mm, UFT. Even though it's not necessarily a Gantt chart, it functions as one. It's a social media calendar. Uh, where did I do it in module two? Social media. Actually, I never finished this, the, the assignment the lady gave me. Um, where do I find it? In this? Yeah, but this is, oh yeah, here it is. All right, are you seeing the, the content calendar? Yes, sir. Right, so here it says Monday and it tells you exactly what you're going to do Monday. And then it says Tuesday, it tells you exactly what you're going to do Tuesday. Sometimes it has the time. It tells you the platform, blog, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, Wednesday, it tells you the platform, what you're going to do. You're going to spring campaign, inspirational blog promo. Um, Thursday, your platform, um, the actual thing that you're going to use and so forth. So this is an example. In other words, um, when you're developing the, the public relations plan, the, especially if you're going to present it to management, they need to know exactly what you're going to do, when you're going to do it, and how you're going to do it, all right? Or what time you're going to do it. And some things too, I'm sure you know that um, on Facebook, for example, you can do premieres. They can like, you know, if, if there's a, if the artist has a new video coming out, you can do a kind of premiere. So there's a kind of countdown that builds up a sense of anxiety and curiosity among fans. So they are busy on social media waiting for it to, waiting to hear the latest Beyonce song or something like that, all right? Um, budget, very, very important. The associated costs, very, very important that budget is included in your public relations plan because you would have to have a meeting now with the artist or if you're in a company, you have to go to management and explain to management why you need $5 million for this particular um, public relations campaign, all right? Evaluation is really the way you're talking about trying to determine the success and or failure of your, um, your public relations campaign, whether or not the goal was achieved, whether or not you achieved each objective. All right, so that's what we talk about when we talk about evaluation. So let's look at an example. So are we seeing, what's the name of the company? Again, for right. So when you're developing a public relations plan, it always comes in response to a problem. So there must be a problem that you are trying to solve. So in this case, the problem is rebranding the Shaggy and Friends concert media presence to adapt to current media trends. All right, because TikTok now is now the big thing. Streaming is very big. Um, you might have virtual pe people from all over the world performing. They don't necessarily have to be in Jamaica. So your 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 the public relations plan is really to answer or provide a solution to a problem. Sometimes we call it a business problem or a marketing problem or a public relations problem. So there might be something that is um you know some people might say oh the shaggy and friends concert is old school i'm sure you guys were aware um or may have heard about the fact that there were some issues with shaggy and friends the foundation relating to tax um with relating to some tax issue and also in terms of how the money was spent am i correct anybody has ever heard anything about that 
Yes, sir. Some um, money laundering issue, I think, or some discrepancies yes. in the statement. Yes, so so some discrepancy in the in the statement, and so it could be that the they may have lost some amount of goodwill or even lost some sponsors because the sponsors are saying, hold on. I thought Shaggy and Friends, the Shaggy and Friends Foundation was really above board and they were not, you know, unethical or unprofessional in any way. And a public and the Shaggy and Friends Foundation, my calling a public relations company or a firm or a person say, help me to solve this problem because I have lost credibility in the marketplace. My public image image or the image of the company has been tarnished. How can I um, rebrand or build back or gain some amount of, um, get back some of some amount of my goodwill, build trust again between myself and my stakeholders uh, because they're concerned about the fact that not only sponsors, but people will not turn up at the concert. Um, and you know, it's very expensive. And it could be too that some artists that can bring their own fan base might say, I'm not going to perform at this particular event because some of the persons who perform there actually do it for free because and they might say hold on if i'm doing this for free and you're collecting from persons and so there might be some you know gray area in terms of what exactly is being done with the funds that are collected all right so you have the company or you have the artist and you have a problem so you have to identify a problem for in your in your respective groups for your group project you have to identify a problem all right, and then now the background now, part of the, the, the plan is the background where you're really kind of giving the, uh, the audience or the reader some insights into the product or the service or the artist, who they are, where did they come from, what kind of music they, 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 they make and did they win any awards or anything like that? Um, are they associated with any professional bodies or do they, you know, different things, like, do they donate any money and, you know, are they related to anybody who's famous? Do they appear on any particular stage show or did they win an award or whatever it is? It forms part of the background. All right. Then now you go on to the, um, this is still a part of the, um, the background. Um, and what it's really saying is that the, they are now giving you specific problems that, are, that need to be addressed, right? So the PR bubble team has noted that the Shaggy and Friends requires a comprehensive public relations plan to address the following problems. Minimal online presence and outdated social media pages, outdated website that lacks current information about the event, lacking an interactive social media and website, reduced donations due to the concerts reduction in turnout of patrons, situation, and well, this is not a problem, situation analysis, this is an error. This should not be there. I should cross it out. Situation analysis is not an error. The situation analysis, no, actually, um, what's this part? Let me just, because this is a, an assignment that was done properly. Um, so they're giving you now, how is it that they went about to somewhat collect information, right? A survey to gather information about the public's awareness, things like that. Some people call it a brand equity research where you're kind of trying to measure the sentiments of the public about a particular brand, foundation, organization, or person, right? Um, then you do the SWOT, and the SWOT now is based on, to some extent, on the research that was done. And you know, SWOT, we're talking about the strength. So you can look at the strength of the artist. Then you're going to look at the weaknesses of the artist. Then you're going to look at the opportunities. Then you're going to look at the threats. And usually, one of the things that I recommend you do is that to identify, to make a recommendation for, so for each weakness that you identify, you put below recommendations. In other words, how these weaknesses can be overcome. And for each threat that you identify, you put, you make recommendations about how each, uh, about how each threat can be overcome. Make sense? Yes, sir. Yes. Any questions, queries, concerns? No. All right. Let's continue. Um, the publics know. Again, we talked about publics and we talked about segmentation. There's a section in your in your public relations plan that you actually have to uh, um, talk about the publics who form part of the publics. All right. I notice here they're talking about music lovers, charity givers, because in this case. Um, the Shaggy and Friends concert is not just 
fans who go to the actual event, they're actually interacting with government, something that is not there. And I, I need to say to Dr. Alpha Abika, because he, he was the one that marked this one, that government um, agencies would form a part of the publics because they would get a tax waiver. So the government becomes whichever Ministry of Finance probably would par form part of their publics. So it's not just the fans, but all, as I said, any and every entity or person that can affect the success and or failure of the of the uh, of the company of the person of the song of whatever all right um objectives no notice no the objectives are very specific if you notice each one has what numbers there's a new there's a number there to increase brand awareness by 20 percent during the first five months during the 12 month campaign aim to increase engagement on social media by 40 percent revamp the current social media presence by maintaining an active company account on to engage with a minimum of 20% of target audience to begin promoting the next stage of Shaggy and Friends during the final six months of the campaign and increase ticket sales by 20%. So there are specific, so if you notice here now, these objectives are very smart. These are very, very smart objectives. All right, any questions relating to the objectives? Nope. So you now have to be thinking the same thing. Okay, what are the objectives? What is my goal for my RTs? And what are the, your objectives are usually four or five, four to five objectives. And what are the objectives? What could be some objectives? All right, and please remember that I sent you some examples. If you plagiarize, I will give you zero. All right, do not plagiarize. Uh, message, mes message statement. I like to think of message statement um, it's very similar to, um, let me see what they have after very similar to uh, positioning. In other words, what do you want the artist to be known for or to be known as? Um, so Beanie Man is the girl named Sugar. Bone to Killer is Anger Cross, Miserable. Vibes Cartel is, very, is the controversial, multi-talented artist. Um, Ninja Man is a, a clash, a, 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 a front teeth, gold teeth, Dan Gargan, a clash king. Um, you find too that artists who are unable to define themselves have a lot of problem. When they don't know, I always say, when you don't know where you fall on the, um, the lineup, the concert lineup or the event lineup, you have a problem. You need to know, and this is something that you need to ask the artists about. What specifically do they want to be known for among the fans or by the public? What exactly? So are you a dancehall artist that focuses on this, focuses on that? You know, you now have to have that conversation. But I say to you that before you have the conversation, listen to their catalog, listen to the music, because all of them have, uh, um, have music um, in the public space and get a sense of who they are. Look to see if the names that they're using actually match the profile. Um, it could be that, you know, listen to their background, um, get a sense of who they are, where they came from. How did they grow up? Did they grow up poor? Did they grow up uptown? Um, are they fathers? Um, you know, different things. Um, what are some of the life, their life experiences? And let that inform you uh, in terms of what kind of artists, you know, what you want to be known for. So this is an example. So Shaggy and Friends is Jamaica's premier con charity concert which was a high standard of providing positive vibes and entertainment to the aim as raising funds to assist the only children's hospital in the region, the Boston, Boston Monte Children's Hospital. So this is the, mes um, the, 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 me the message statement. Some people say mission statement, um, but I would also want for you now to add something called positioning. In other words, what is it that you want, to be, want the artist to be known for in the marketplace? Any questions? All right, evaluation, no, um, conducting surveys, post. In other words, what are you going to do to determine the success or what the, the, to determine the success of the campaign? How are we going to know if the campaign is successful? So they are giving you some examples, conduct surveys, post campaign to evaluate the effectiveness of the implemented campaign, post performing an online analysis to evaluate campaign um, traffic, Friends um, host live stream interactive sessions on social media, which engages followers in question and answer segments to get your feedback on the Shaggy and Friends charity event. 
um, performing comparison tests with all media platforms that will be included in the campaign. So for you, sometimes all you, you, evaluation will be whether or not, you know, um, how many platforms you're able to get the, the, the artists on TV, radio, whatever. What was the response of the fans in relation to the performance? Yeah, another thing that you can look at um, is to look at the comments. You can look call social listening, look at the comments that are being posted about particular songs. Um, yeah, things like that. And you can use that to determine um, as part of the evaluation of the campaign. Any questions? No? Okay. Uh, what's this? Oh, yes. This is an example now. Um, this is where you know, you're talking about a particular tactic that you're going to use. So a sample, and this is just their example of a tactic. A sample tactic that our team will employ is a highlight video, a one minute, 30 second video that is a compilation of snippets from prior performances of the concert. The video will display Shaggy turning over the proceeds generated by the concert to the children's hospital, as well as the installation and use of the new ICU machines and how they make the quality of the hospital better. And they actually have a, uh, an image so here's an image so this is in other words this is the the real the video real these are the things that would be included in the video reel this and there's supposed to be another part uh, uh yeah so this is an example and then of course you have this is just a sample of a budget i kind of pull it from something a sample of a budget and the budget is the last thing uh the budget is the last thing um in your and i want you to do your budget on an excel um file I don't want you to include it as a part of the Word document. Okay. Any questions? Um, are no, we sir. understand? Are we understanding? So far. So far. Anybody learned anything? Should I take that as a no? Sir. Yes, sir. I should take it as a no that you didn't learn anything. No, no, oh, sir. sir. There yes. are some things, man. Okay. Um, sir, Romario, the, 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 the plan is not the only assignment you have for the class. You're going to do press release, featured story. So everything is a part of the plan. All the assignments that you do is a part of the plan. It's just that you're going to do it in pieces. All right. So you're not just writing a document. Remember, that's not what you're doing. You have to get them onto different platforms. You're going to write press release, featured story, and all of that. So it's not so not just this simple document that I'm showing you you're going to do. Uh, no. Um, yeah, it's going to be most of it will be group work. Most of it will be group work. Uh, yeah, somebody was saying something. Oh, I was saying I didn't learn anything because I joined late. Okay. All right. So you can watch the recording. All right. Let's look at another example. I'm going to show you another example before I give it a um, class activity. Let's look at another example. Where do I have it actually? Let me just close some of these things. I have too many files open. Um, and it gets me a little bit confused. Okay. Let's go back and go into, let's just get some of these things off my computer. Mm, do I want to do that? No. Let's go back. What the? No, I don't want to use that. My Lord. All right, let me just show you an example, another example. All right, I save it, I save it. I actually had it earlier. I saved it. No, this is not it. I think this is an example of a crisis communication plan. No, I don't want to do that one yet. The other one I want to do. Where did I save it? Oh my goodness. Finding these things. Somewhere. Mm, sample, here it is. Right, here it is. All right, so another example. I see I'm seeing a hand. This is Janelle. Go ahead. Sir, I was just messaging in the chat. Good evening, sir. Sir. I'm not sure if this was actually mentioned, sir, in relation to the final um, work with the RT, sir. And um, do you have like a rubric or like a mark scheme in relation to what you expect of us or the content, sir, or a content? Uh, 
Uh, did I not share a document that um, shows you what I'm marking for? Yes, sir. I'm actually seeing that. But in relation to our rubric, as in, um, in relation to like how many, what, how much it worth, or the final, the, the, all that you're doing is um, is worth um, fifty percent because it is the practical exam. Okay, sir. Mm -hmm. But I let's just let me let me speak a little bit more specific towards it. Um, when I have you again next week, right? Because today's what? Today's today Thursday, right? Thursday. Have you yeah. this on Tuesday? On Tuesday. So on Tuesday, I'll get, I'll be a little bit more specific in terms of the allocation of the marks. But the ruby that I provided you is part of it. So I'll give you some more detail. Okay. Yes, that, that's that's what I wanted, sir. The more in in depth with the details, sir. Okay. No problems. All right, thank you. No problems. Um, let me share screen. So let us look at another example. I like to just share our screen. Um, sir? Make... Yes? Mr. Go ahead. Clark? Go ahead. I said Something. go ahead. Oh, let me just start hearing you, sir. Would you be able to reshare that which you, are, you just mentioned in the group, sir, because... I, I recently got onto the WhatsApp, so I don't have those. It was sent via email. It was sent. Did you have you been checking your email? It's not in my email. It's only one thing I got. I, I got two things from the email. The different, the outline on the different personnel, and I guess I saw a sample project. I believe. Did you check that email and look inside to see if the rubric was in it? It's not in it, sir. Okay. All right. I'll share it at, at some other point. Um, so here's a table of content, guys, a background situation analysis. We kind of went through all of this a while ago, but just as a refresher, background situation analysis, public objectives, measure statement, evaluation method, key tactics, but they have only one tactic. You need more than one budget, appendix, references. Um, and this is, this PR plan was done for Pink Cabby public relations plan. So this is for, uh, I think, let's call it a taxi. Yeah, so Pink Cabby is a newly introduced initiative which started this generous da da da. So let me see. This is this taxi service is providence for females who may have difficult time commuting. So here they're trying to identify somewhat of a problem. No, that's not what you want intended to do. Somewhat of a problem. Are and they're using this course as well. I think so, but if even if I haven't, I'm going to share. Okay. Because I, I did put it on Canvas, but I'm not sure why you're not able to access it. Because I, I put all the examples there. Um, I'm going to actually meet with Dr. B tomorrow. So I'll just send me a reminder in the WhatsApp group. I'll talk to her about it because you should be able to access the samples, OK? Uh, so this is the background, gives us um, some amount of background. Um, and then now we get into the situation analysis. Um, strengths, weaknesses, the kind of they should have done the color thing. So this is the strength, or these are strengths, these are weaknesses, uh, these are opportunities. And where are the threats? These are threats. So the situation analysis, then you get into the discussion about the publics, the various publics. And then you look at, these are the specific objectives. Notice, notice that they are very, one, two, three, four, five, um, very specific or very smart, each having some sort of metric. This is a message statement. This, this is how they're going to evaluate their campaign to determine whether or not it is successful. Um, the key tactic that they're going to use. And they're telling you testimonials, reviews, and uh, the, whatever that is. I'm seeing something in the chat. What is this? Are you guys seeing my screen? Yes, okay, I'm not sure uh, what's happening with somebody else. All right, so these are, where, where, where was I again? T key tactic. Um, and then they're telling about, this is where, you remember we're talking about the Gantt chart, like, you know, what are you going to do over a period of time? So is it a three months campaign? So this is, um, this seems to be a six months campaign, actually. Let me see if it's six months. January, February, March, April, May, June. Six months campaign. So this is a, the, the timeline. So time platforms that they're going to use. So this is a PR plan that will be executed primarily on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And the nature of the post, they're kind of giving you an insight in terms of what specifically they are going to do. And here's the budget, but I don't want this to go flimsy thing. I want you to do it on an Excel file. 
Okay. Any questions? Okay, no questions. So let me just reshare the examples because I'm going to give you a class activity to do. Okay, let me find you guys in my scent because it's easier that way. Public relations outline sample plans. Remember to add me to your scent. What's your email? Ruth.power05. Mine.myecc. That's edu.jm. All right, let me just check this, see if it's there. Yeah, it's there. I, I you, were e you were copied in the email before. You said root.powell05 at my, it's there in my email. Remember too that these things are on um on um see the samples attached okay. are on canvas. Please remain, please ensure that you guys are going on canvas, all right? Because most of what I'm saying, well, not all, but some of what I'm saying is on canvas. Public relations. I've got already. only two things from canvas. I've already printed those. Um, where did I save it? I know I saved it here. It can't be on the general. No. It's not there. Oh, yeah. Simple. Yeah, pink abbey. This is one. No, I need to PDF this thing because I don't want anybody. Um, give me one sec. I need to PDF it because if you guys plagiarize, you're going to get zeros. So let me just plagiarize. Um, let me just PDF this thing and encrypt it. Okay. Export. All right, let's do it again. All right, so this is PDF. Okay, where did I put my lecture? Lectures, we put under here. I don't think so, actually. No. No, that's crisis communication, which I'm not ready to teach yet. No, when did I save it? Oh, no, I saved it on the PR plan. Yeah. This is where I save it. Um, and the, oh, the other example is in the lecture, actually. So, all right, just confirm if you have received my email. No, sir, I haven't received an email. Um, what's your name? Uh, what's your name? Oh, sorry, sir, the screen did freeze. I get it now. Okay. All right, so class activity. All right, so let me share screen. It's now your turn. Create a PR plan for one of the following RTs. Oh no, I'm gonna put it in groups, right? Oh no, this is not our plan to do it. All right, so how many people are here? Let me break our room. Not many people are here, no, um, let's see. Yeah. All right, so room one is Kumiko, Larian, Shanice, Tajari. You are going to do Mr. Lex or formerly called Lexus. Please ensure you write down the information. Or it's Tajero. 
Okay, Tajira. Um, room two, it's Sante, Janelle, Charnake. You are doing, where the hell is this thing? You are doing, if I can find it, Kaledo. So that's room two. Room three, please write it down. Um, so you're going to ask me and I, I'm going to get frustrated. Please write it down and I call your name. Room so three. Lexus, sorry. Room one. Lexus. Odwin. Yes. yes. Or Mr. Lex. I think his name, well, his name is Mr. Lex. Um, room three, alternate. You're doing alternate. Um, room three, alternate. Debbie Brooks Campbell Romario. You're doing Maca Diamond. Um, room four, your Donovan Shelley Antonian, you are doing Tifa. Room five, you are doing sorry, in who? Sorry, which room is room the one that you just mentioned? Room five, I know it could not be room five because I just started talking about room five. Room, room four, four, you're doing um Tifa, Donovan Shelley and Antonian. Um, room five, Jessica Ruth, Tatiana, you are doing I Octane. Room six, you're doing Cecile, which is Cassandra, Latona, Venice. So let me do it again. Room one, Kumiko, Lorian, Shanice, Tajira. That's Mr. Lex. Room two, Shante, Janelle, Sharnike, Paledo. Room three, Alternate, Debbie, Debbie Brooks Campbell, Romario. You're doing Maca Diamond, room four, Donovan, Shelly Antonian. You're doing Tifa, room five, Jessica Ruth, T Tatiana. You're doing I Octane, room six, Cassandra Latona. Venice, you're doing Cecile. I've opened the breakout rooms.
Hi, sir. Can you put me back to my room, please? I'm not sure what happened. I, I close it. Class is, time is almost up. So oh, we're going to continue. Because I'm of... like, I didn't select anything. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so we're going to carry it's going to we're going to carry it over into the following lecture. So what we might do um, on Tuesday, we might use the entire time just to for you to get a real feel of um, doing um, the public relations campaign so that it's your actual assignment would be much more manageable. OK, noted. Yeah. All right. Have all the breakout rooms closed? Uh, no, we have 10 seconds. Was anybody able to identify a public relations problem for the, the, the artist that you were assigned? Sir, can you repeat that for me, please? Did you by chance manage to determine um, or craft a PR problem for the artist that you were assigned? Anybody managed to identify? Yes, that? sir. Go ahead, tell us your artist and what you identified as a PR problem. Sure, sir. Good evening, everyone. So our artist is Mata Diamond. The PR mm -hmm. problem we were able to identify is that she has no specific audience. Um, we believe she needs to. For going forward, we would have to assist her in deciding on a target, uh, target audience, understanding who she's trying to please um, in order to properly position herself. Okay, all right, sounds, sounds workable. All right, guys, so I think we had a really good class. We'll carry this over into the following class, working in the same groups. And that's why I posted it in the, in the WhatsApp group so that we don't forget who we are working with. But do not do it outside of class, all right? This is going to be an in-class thing that we're going to do. So don't, don't use your time that you're supposed to meet the artist to be working on this, all right? Use your outside time to work on the artist. Have a very good evening, everybody. And I would tell you happy Canada Day because tomorrow is a public holiday here. So be safe and enjoy your weekend. All right. Thanks, right, sir. You sir too. Take care. Yes, it was a very good class. Thank you. You're welcome, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.